You're listening to The High Upside Show, a podcast that allows people like you and me to invest our money in a more entertaining way. My name is Keenan Rivals. I'm a photographer by the day, but I make most of my money by flipping cards. In this show, I'll be sitting down with you and sharing my best practices. You'll learn my process, the lessons I've learned, and more importantly, who you should be buying. What's up, guys? And welcome back to The High Upside Show. It's your host, Keen Arrivals. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have a little more energy in today's episode, and that's because it's officially 2020. With that being said, Happy New Year to you guys. We're still getting to know each other on this podcast. Mostly what I talk about is basketball, but if you really want to like know one thing about me, I am a big reset person. Like I am, like if it's a Monday or a new year or a new month, like I just go crazy. I just get like really excited. I, I, I don't know why. It's, it's just something that's been happening throughout my life. I'm definitely that annoying friend that's like new year, new me, 2020, we're doing this. So yeah, that's a little fun fact about me. I recently finished updating my Excel sheet. If you guys are investing, if you don't know what an Excel sheet is, it's pretty much just a uh, list of cards you bought, you know, the prices you paid, the prices you sold. It's, it's really just like a, a documentation of my investments. If you don't have one, you definitely should. Maybe I'll do like a mock-up for you guys and you can download it in. I don't know. I might make a video on that. But yeah, I went ahead and I finished updating that. And I noticed that last year, especially in the month of December, I take a lot of losses on cards. Everything I do is color coordinated and you know, red is obviously my indication of a loss. And yeah, when I was going through that Excel sheet, I just saw a lot of red. And initially that like really bummed me out. I was like, man, there's a lot of negatives here. You know, I didn't look at the percentages or I didn't look at the different prices. I just saw that color. And I'm like, how did I profit? How did I make money if all these cards are in the negative? So of course that prompted me to kind of look at the numbers and you know, as it showed, you know, I made some decent money last year, uh, you know, investing in basketball cards, despite a majority of my portfolio being in the negative. And I thought this was just a really good topic to kind of talk about. Again, a lot of you guys are new. You're just not getting into investing. And I believe a lot of you think that, you know, every card sale or every transaction has to be a profitable one. And I just kind of want to talk about why it doesn't and why it might be a good idea to actually take some losses when investing. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, like, take a loss. Why would I want to do that? I get it. Nobody wants to lose money. Nobody wants to, you know, buy into somebody and, and sell them at a cheaper price. But if you're investing the right way, like if you're being honest with yourself, if you're being strategic, then it's just a part of the game. Like taking losses are inevitable. And trust me, that doesn't make, you know, taking the first loss any better like it hurt it sucks my, my first loss this year really hit me hard to the point where I felt like a failure I felt like who am I to be doing this podcast who am I to be running this blog if I'm losing money but those thoughts quickly faded away because my process showed me that okay it really made sense to make this move so by now you're probably asking yourself okay well I hear what you're saying but like when should I take a loss and that's what I want to get into today I want to get into the three reasons why you should take a loss within this hobby so let's just say you bought a player, you bought a few of his cards, you scouted him, you've watched his games, you really like his playing style, you think he has a shot at being like the next guy in the league or the next guy on the team. When should you sell that player at a loss? Well, the first indication is, you know, having a strategy. I talk about this, you know, in some previous episodes, I talk about this a lot in the blog. When you're buying into a player, you need to kind of have a strategy. You need to know at what price you're comfortable paying for you know, X card, and you need to kind of have a general idea of what price you're comfortable selling at. In the stock market, you know, people use stop losses to kind of, you know, indicate this. Let's say the guy you're looking at is a risky investment. He's, he's really good at a few things, but maybe his team um, is packed with, you know, really good talent and he doesn't have a lot of playing time. You know, he's ninth, 10th on the rotation. He gets 10 minutes a game. You know, but you you like what you see in him. You like if somebody gets injured or if he gets a, a call up or an opportunity or trade it, then he could be a, a really big threat in the league. And yeah, you buy into a lot of his cards and you're patiently waiting. Let's just say you pay 20 bucks for those cards. You get a Prism Silver PSA 10. It's 20, 25 dollars. Those tend to be like the prices of the the high risk players. And then you kind of see them go down. He's not getting that playing time. He's or he is and he's not performing and he's dropping in price. At what point are you looking to get stuck with that player's cards? One guy I bought uh, this year was Terrence Ferguson. I really like Terrence Ferguson's game. He's amazing on 2K. He's kind of like that 3 and D guy. Really good at uh, three pointers. He's athletic. He can dunk like, out of this world. He's a great wing defender. He's long. He has all the tools to be 
a solid shooting guard in this league. When OKC made the trade for Shai Gildas Alexander, I'm like, okay, well, they have a young court here. We got SGA at the point guard. We got Terrence at the shooting guard. They might be able to do some damage as a young core. They may not win any games, but they might do some damage. And as the season progressed, you know, Terrence Ferguson got the time. He got the minutes, but he just didn't get the touches. He doesn't shoot the ball ever. He rarely scores, you know, even though he plays 20 minutes per game. And his cards kind of, you know, went on a downward spiral. There was no money to be made on them. And I had to look at those investments and say, okay, well, you know, what do we think? Do we believe that he's going to pay off? Do we believe that he's going to turn it around? Or have you lost too much money on these investments? And what I ultimately decided was some of the rare cards that I got for uh, a bargain, you know, you might say to keep those, but some of the, the more saturated cards, like the Prism PSA 10s, I decided to let those go. They just weren't really maintaining any value. And, you know, I was lucky to get $9.99 plus shipping for them, even though I probably paid around $20. The fear was that I just didn't want to get stuck with those cards at a declining price point. You know, the, you know, holding them isn't always the, the smartest investment. And, and ultimately I decided to let them go. I was just like, it's not really worth it. At some point, these might have no value at all. Again, the rare cards I kept because those are always going to hold a premium. If he does show any sign of potential, I should be able to move those for at least what I paid for them. However, with the Prism PSA 10s, the odds of them hitting $20, $25 just didn't seem realistic for me. Another outcome of that is just noticing that trend. Like if you notice somebody's declining, you notice they're losing value. It might also be a good idea to kind of sell at a loss with the intention to buy back even cheaper. We see that a lot with the stock market. We see that a lot with crypto. You know, you buy at a somewhat high price and you're like, okay, this is going down. You know, this, this stock or this card or this commodity is looking very bearish and you know, you just kind of see that, you know, dump coming. You know, you have to have the intuition to get out while you can. Maybe you bought at 20 and then you sold it at 15, but you bought it back at 10. You know, maybe you doubled your your, your portfolio or your, your holdings by selling. You know, there's always some benefits to doing that. A good example, again, is with Michael Porter Jr. When he first started playing in the preseason and he had that, really, that breakout game in the season, I was buying some of his cards and... I got caught up in the hype. You know, I bought some cards at some really high values. I think I paid like a hundred something dollars for a, a optic PSA nine hollow. Um, it was just insane. Uh, they were like really rare at the time and I wanted one and I was like, okay, he's the next guy. And I was looking at Luca's prices and you know, they just, it just seemed like I get value compared to Luca, but I have to remember like, okay, Michael Porter Jr. Isn't Luca. He's not performing at that level just yet. And when I kind of came to that realization, he started to kind of fizzle, you know, his minutes became less and less, you know, apparent. I was like, all right, well, I got to get out of this car. You know, I need to sell it. Um, you know, and I sold it at a loss. I sold it for like $70, took a little loss, looked really bad, you know, 30% loss. But later on in the year, I picked up, you know, three of them for $20. So yeah, I take a $30 loss. And yes, I still believed in this player, but I was able to turn that loss for $30 into three more cards. It ended up being a way better value. You know, I got three for, for 60 as opposed to just holding on to that one for 100 and hoping that he break out. If you dollar cost average that, then essentially I paid 30 for each, which isn't a bad deal at all. You got to sell with the intent to buy lower. So really happy with that decision. Again, doesn't really look pretty on paper, not yet, but I know mentally that I triple my value. And I think the last reason to kind of know when to sell is just if you see a better buying opportunity. I took some losses on cards of great prospects, people that I thought were going to do really well. I picked up a lot of Ben Simmons and some trades and purchased some of his cards and I purchased them as they were declining. I was like, OK, you know, this was going for 750. Now it's going for 500. Now it's going for 450. Might be a good time to buy, you know, and little did I know they were still going to kind of decline. And the more I watched Ben Simmons play, the more I become frustrated with him. I was just like, man, he has all this potential on paper, but he's just not applying it. And though he may be good, I just don't have the patience to wait. Like watching him play basketball makes me angry. He should be dunking on people and he should be shooting threes and he should play like he plays in pickup. And he's just not displaying that. Even when it comes to him being like a solid point guard, sometimes his ball handling and his quick shuffle passes just make me angry. They're not really setting anybody up. He just runs to the free throw line and he just passes it back to the three pointer. I, I didn't agree with his playing style. I didn't like it. And 
yeah, again, it just frustrated me as an investor. And I decided, you know what, Ben Simmons, maybe a really great guy, maybe a really great player, but I just don't like what I see. So I'm going to move his cards. And I sold most of them at a 20% loss. I mean, I still have some that I'm trying to sell. And up until this podcast, they're still continuing to decline. But I did get, you know, some of them off. And what I did was I took that money and I purchased some Giannis cards because I like Giannis. He was dominant. He was everything that I wanted Ben Simmons to be. And I took a loss on those cards, but the Giannis cards doubled in price within a week. You know, if I would have never sold those Ben Simmons cards at a loss, I would have never had the money to even purchase Giannis. You know, those cards were so far out of my reach, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars a pop. And I just said, whatever, let's go for it. You know, I, I like that investment a lot better. So sometimes you got to take a loss on a player to get into a better situation. And that situation, if it works out for you, it could benefit that loss. You know, the, the, the price of the Giannis when they went up definitely made me more money. Like in the long run, I went from, you know, I don't even think Ben Simmons had the potential to double anytime soon. And Giannis did. And it was such a quick ROI. And I'm just really happy that I made that decision because I contemplated it for quite some time. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to sell these at a loss. That's not a good look. You know, I paid 450, but I'm selling it, for, you know, 380. You factor in like shipping and fees. Oh, I lost a hundred bucks. And then boom, you know, you buy a Giannis card and you make $700, you make $800 and you're a genius. So sometimes you got to take that loss just to have some cash on hand, you know, have some capital to reinvest, have some capital to kind of re-strategize and, and be more strategic. So yeah, I want you guys to kind of think about that. I want you to go home, look at your cards and, and ask yourself, like, is this a good investment? Is this a good long-term hold? Are there, are there better options out there? Can I sell these cards at a potential loss? buy somebody else, double my money. And then if I still believe in this guy, come back and buy these cards. I know a lot of people bought like Dwayne Bacon and Malik Beasley. And those investments probably aren't panning out right now. But imagine if you would have like, say you bought Dwayne Bacon and he wasn't doing what you expected, but you saw Devontae Graham had a couple good games and you sold your Dwayne Bacon and then you bought Devontae Graham and he tripled in value and you sold Devontae Graham and you went back and bought Dwayne Bacon with profits alone and you were able to keep your initial you know investment to invest in other things or double down on Dwayne Bacon like you know you have to think strategically you have to understand that you're going to take a loss and that sometimes losses are healthy they teach you so much you know you're 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 paying for the lesson of losing essentially you you learn so much by losing I learned so much by losing I'm like shouldn't have bought all these cards or I shouldn't have went that crazy or just because he's cheap doesn't mean it's a good investment and you know I just I just learned so much from taking small micro losses. So I hope this podcast helped you guys. Let me know what you think. If you haven't taken a loss yet, just go do it. You know, take take those 10 cards you got of that guy and he's that it's not doing well and let him go, man. You know, get get 50 bucks back. Take that 50 and, and be better next time. Be smarter. Anyway, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, then I highly recommend you go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. There you can find this podcast as well as some additional content. I got a few videos coming out that I think will help you guys like some tips and tricks and some things that I utilize in the hobby that won't be a part of this podcast. So definitely go over there and subscribe. I need you guys' help. Also check out the blog, the website, highupsideshow.com, as well as Twitter and Instagram. I need you guys support on that. 2020 is going to be a big year. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy investing.